All right, so let me show what I am making today. I did say we're just doing a tote with one pocket. We're actually making four pockets, and it's really easy because it just is sewed into the seam. So this is the tote bag. And I decided to add more pockets because we're all makers here. We need a lot of pockets for our projects. So, so you can see the four pockets right here. It's on each side. And I also am a dancer. I'm a trained dancer and I perform. So I take dance classes. And so I'm actually using this for my shoes so I can keep them in each compartment. So this being the Christmas um, workshops, this could be a great project for little girls or boys going to dance class, or if you do crochet or knitting, this could be a project bag, if any kind of craft bag to hold your supplies, travel bag for kids in the car. So a lot of options with this bag. Very basic, but like she said, hopefully I am sharing some new efficiency skills and other things that are mostly self-taught. They are not official, but still efficient. So I also have a PDF that I sent to them, I believe will be available on Facebook afterwards. So it has the measurements of everything and then the list of instructions that we're going to go through. And let me show you what I will also be using. They shared with me some of these, these attachments that have these, these attachment guides. So we will be using um, every, all of them between 1 16th to about 3 8 I believe. 1 8, 3 8, and 1 16th, and 1 4th. And these will help us as we're sewing so that we don't have to guess. And so it's just a more consistent line as we sew. And that is something that I first found out when I was working at the industrial design company last year. It, we made military jumpsuits. So very they have to be very precise. Even the stitch lengths have to be very precise. And so these were a big help. And with my Juki, I can't move the stitches from side to side like we just saw on that home machine. So that is why these will come in handy a lot. I said we're starting with one fourth. We're going to start with the pocket and I already marked the, the middle of it. If you wanted to make a pocket asymmetrical, meaning one compartment bigger than the other, then you can move that center line to accommodate maybe what you're deciding to put in the pocket. But I decided to put in the middle. And what we're going to do first, we're going to do a three eighths double fold top hem and I'm actually going to I like my hem fold to be on the inside so that the chalk I can still see the chalk on the outside again we're going to do about three eighths fold Let's get that started okay and also one of the tips I shared on TikTok is we're actually going to start perpendicular kind of closer to the edge. We're gonna start sewing. Kind of stop it, put the needle in right where you want it. And then we're gonna turn it here. That way it eliminates the back stitch showing on that edge. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was gonna say that is actually the video that I had seen that I was like, oh, I love this. <laughs> Genius, right? And that is the tip I learned. That was like my biggest takeaway. I was like, oh my gosh, how, how simple is that? Like you just, hide it <laughs> so there you go <laughs> sorry to interrupt <laughs> it's okay no worries all right i don't have any fancy folding hem uh attachment so once i have it anchored in here then i use my fingers i'm eyeballing it you can definitely use a little ruler so then i just hold it you can kind of see it's about four inches out i give it some tension and I'm using the one fourth guide. Beautiful, and I'm just gonna keep going. Hopefully my chalk mark doesn't disappear, but we should still be able to see it. And then put the needle in, pivot. You can do a back stitch here, you can see me reaching over my my um, my holder. So pull that out, and there we go. So no back stitch. It's a little hard to see with the shading. But you can just it's on the ends. Trim off my threads. All right. So one pocket done. Let's do the other pocket. And this is still a new trick I'm getting used to. So then I'm figuring out where I can use it in each of my projects. I don't make this tote in my 
repertoire um, of products on my website. So I definitely figured this out in my test run of where I could implement this trick. So I'm, I can use it right away. But normally what I make on my website, um, I have, uh, and what I made in that video that Trisha is referring to is a fanny pack. So that's what I've been making a lot recently are fanny packs. I can do backpacks, um, a lot of different type of bags, mostly for like travel, on the go. And, um, and I try to repurpose materials too. So these fabrics I'm using for this bag, I got at a thrift store, local thrift shop. Um, and the bag, the sample bag I showed you, the red one, I got at a surplus store where it's just all the extra remnants. So I try to repurpose when possible and it just makes it more fun and, and unique. I should mention that the type of fabric, it kind of is up to you and your comfort level. I would suggest more medium to higher weight material for a tote bag on um, this. This one I use like a, there's two different materials. I think the outside is a linen mix and the inside was a crepe mix. So it was a little slinky, um, but I was comfortable using it. But I'd say as a beginner, you could use a cotton, a really basic cotton. If your machine is able to, you can use a canvas. Just really use your comfort level, but I'd suggest medium or higher. We have two pockets done. Now we're gonna take the, this is the taller lining one. So this pocket, I mean, sorry, this uh, lining piece is 17 inches tall. This pocket was 14 inches tall and we just did about almost an inch fold so you'll have about a three inch almost four inch gap at the top and again you can tailor that to your liking i'm going to you can see i lined up the bottom edges all right i'm gonna pin that in place but yeah if you guys have any questions i'm happy to answer them i've just pinned here and then the top of the pocket i'm just going to sew straight down the middle i'm not going to worry about the back stitch showing is this, this is the bottom of the pocket. And I kept the one fourth foot because we need it for the next thing. And I'm just going to sew straight on that chalk line. You know what? I think I'm now realizing why this is having trouble moving. This guide it raises the foot. So I would actually, let's, on the next one, I'm gonna switch to a regular foot because when you sew, think what's happening. I'm learning, we're learning this together. What's happening is that this foot, if there's any fabric underneath this foot, it kind of raises it up and these stitches are a lot smaller than what it's supposed to. So just be aware of that. It will be a little smaller. Again, it's just a pocket, so it's not a huge deal but um, I'm gonna switch to a regular foot to show you the difference and what I mean there. All right, we got one pocket done. Let me figure out which way this goes. Let's do the other pocket. Also, I am gonna give away this tote at the end. So I am gonna add this for the winner. And it has a blue lining and then like a brown outside. I like the, just the two-tone makes it a little more fun, okay. So I have it all pinned. I'm gonna switch the feet to my regular foot right here. This is the one that comes with the machine. Um, I forgot to preface what type of machine I have. It's a Juki Industrial, it's a straight stitch. It's a DDL 8300N. And so yeah, just as a straight stitch, it's intended for just tailoring, but I do use it for leather and vinyl. I don't go any bigger than like two millimeters, maybe three millimeters. So nothing too strenuous on it. It's been doing good. And I've also taught myself how to fix the timing. <laughs> I just say it saved me a lot of money and then I can kind of test things out and then fix it if I need. Okay, so now I have just a regular foot on there and you'll see it should glide a lot easier. Yep, if you have the guide, it doesn't, it doesn't feed the fabric through as well if you have fabric underneath that guide. Yep, so much easier. And I always like to go above the pocket so that you, because as you open this, you know, it's going to pull on that top. So I always go over the pocket. Okay. We have two linings done with the pockets. And we, when we put it all together, it'll create that finished pocket. I'm keeping all the pins there. All right. So now we're going to do a strap. 
standard straps are 24 inches um, raw, and this one we're going to, and it's um, three and a quarter. So we're just gonna half it, figure out which one's the outside. So yeah, it's a really pretty brown with this blue. So the brown will be our outside. I'm actually gonna change my thread now because I think I'm done with the blue. I'm just using basic standard thread on this. My needle is a Schmetz. Um, so the fact that we're giving away some snatch products. So this is normally what I use also for my, I typically use nylon thread for my vinyl and leather. It's more durable and looks better with, it pairs better with those materials. Um, I just honestly keep my same needle. I just change my thread. And then I also change my tension to accommodate the thinner thread. So then I would tighten the tension in my bobbin and that I would tighten it when I move from nylon to cotton. We're just doing cotton for this. Maybe if I was doing a canvas bag, I would maybe do my nylon thread. Okay, so I changed to a more caramely thread. All right, we're just gonna fold it long ways and I'm gonna switch back to my fourth inch. All right. Doing a back stitches. All right, here we go. And this just makes it so much easier. With experience, you could, you know, line this up with your eye, but it, even with my experience, it's just so much easier. Just one less thing you have to, to worry about. And pin as much as you need. If you're comfortable not pinning and holding it, that is great too. Okay, here's another thing that I learned on my own and they do use in factories. This is called just chain stitching, just assembly line. So you keep that right in there and you can see they're right next to each other. This saves you the thread, having to pull it out and cut it. That's one efficiency tip. Yeah, it's so helpful. I do wholesale and so if I'm making the same, say 10 of one thing, saves me so much time. All right, and because this is not my typical product, I'm using the old school safety pin method. Stick it in there, pop it back in. Sarah, right. one yes. thing that I was going to mention is I was watching your video on your assembly line technique. You were making those four bags at once. Yeah, That's yeah. one thing. I don't know why it doesn't mesh with my brain, like cutting everything <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to do this. <laughs> yeah, cutting. Oh, yeah, layering everything together, especially if the fabric is thin enough, I cut layers at a time. I don't have an electric one. I really should get one of those, but those are really efficient. And yeah, just kind of doing it in bundles. You kind of just, just rotate through and it's so easy. It's, it really helps yeah. you like, you can just turn your brain off for a little bit because it's so much. So yeah, I really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I come from a large family. So I'm like, this would be great for gifts. I just have to get that process down on how to yes. make multiple ones at once and I'll be good. <laughs> yep, once you got down, you won't go back. <laughs> there you go. Okay, this strap, um, this is a little thicker, so it's a little, yeah, a little tougher than the red one I had made, but it's definitely doable. So if, say if you have a thicker fabric and you use this method, um, maybe make a wider strap. I love chain piecing all day. Yes, it's great. Oh yeah, so this is what was really interesting when I was at the factory. They have, they have such a large inventory and, you know, and sales. They have a person who just cuts the chains they cut the chains and they also like cut all of the extra threads so like when you finish something that's maybe not able to have a chain you have just you know the six inches of thread someone just cuts the threads or makes like just cleans everything up i was like oh i wish i had someone to do that for me someone is commenting on a, ta a tube turner so yes they do exist i just don't have one and you can see that this one's kind of taking taking a while it's not as slippery so okay someone's asking what kind of machine i have a juki it's a juki industrial it's a straight stitch machine 
and I'm using the different guides today to help me. Yes, someone commented 8300. Um, I'm using the guides to help me with the positioning of how close I am to the edge, especially when doing top stitches. It's really great. Okay, I got it. I've also seen they have tube turners. It's just like a stick in a base and you just push it through. So I've seen those. Those are cool. All right. So we're just going to finger press this. You could iron it. I'm just going to finger press this. So this is the seam I just made. We're just going to go along there. And then the other side will be really easy too. And we're going to switch to, I was going to do 1 16th, but the fabric is a little thicker. I'm actually going to do 1 8th because sometimes if it's too thick and it's too small, it doesn't really grab it properly. So I'm going to do 1 8th. My PDF will say 1 16th. And you can tailor it to whatever you want, really. Okay, so one eighth for the strap. Okay, finger pressing. This one I'm not going to worry about the back stitch because most of it will be tucked into the bag, and you'll see. And I'm just going to do short, short one. All right, you can see how I'm pushing that out. And I like to go five or six inches. Beyond, pull it. Excellent. Good to use the chain stitch again here. Have to finish this side. I will comment on the last video or a couple that uh, Trisha showed where she's working on a vintage singer. So I've worked on, I've sewn on one of those. Um, it was actually a, a replica in India. I've taught sewing abroad for, um, for humanitarian um, trips and we got sewing machines for them and they always make these, they always have these rep singer replicas and they were all treadle machines. They don't have electricity. So we had to do some troubleshooting and getting those to work. Mostly the, if the, is it rubber? Yeah, the rubber belt wasn't working. Actually, no, they don't use a rubber belt. They use rope. That is their belt, is a rope. And let's say that rope breaks. They take fabric and like, make it tight like spin it all together so that is their rope so they make their own rope they are so they are so uh what's the word savvy i am so impressed so yeah i learned how to use a treadle machine i don't know if that one was a treadle machine or not um i think i missed that little bit but those are those are tough to get that rhythm of it that can be really tricky. So fun story about the treadle. You are correct. Yeah. It was a treadle machine. Yeah. I thought it was going to be easy to use a treadle. It is not. <laughs> no, because it can go backwards. Like, it, uh -huh. yeah, you have, it's all about the timing. Crazy. It was really funny. We were um, practicing. I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy, you know, and I get my feet on <laughs> little stop on you and also like <laughs> no but one of them down was pretty fun but yeah it was an experience for sure but that is really really cool that you traveled to India and did yeah. that very it, it was fun that was my first time no that was my second time teaching abroad and then um I've taught other places too so I'm I've I love teaching so when you asked me to do this I was like oh Love to, and it's in English, so <laughs> and you understand me. So, yeah. No, I guess I meant you understand me. <laughs> I don't speak another language. That's cool. I'm so impressed by people that can speak other languages. I tried learning Spanish like five times, and it just did not stick. <laughs> no, I took French in high school, but that's that's high school. So well, very cool. I'll, I'll it. Okay, thanks. All right, there's some. Um, yeah, the Amish. I'm sure. They would be using treadle machines. Oh, yes. And someone mentioned that if the treadle machine goes backwards, it breaks the thread. So that was the really frustrating part for us and for these ladies. They're just learning how to sew. They're just trying to get the, the hang of it. And so it was hard. But we definitely practiced without thread. So we didn't have to constantly work um, deal with that. All right. So our straps are done. And this is... 
This is if you want custom straps, you obviously could use just like cotton straps, webbing to make it easier to eliminate one step. But if you want it to match and yeah, be the same, there you go. So now at my desk, you can kind of see it here in the on the needle view, but I'll try to hold it up as well. So we are going to mark, um, I think I'm going to do five inches, a five inch gap between the straps, just marking the middle with a needle and I use a hemming ruler to mark it. I also have this roller like um, a chalk marker. I love it because it just dusts right off. You don't have to worry about the water as long as it's not going to be, you know, brush off with handling it too much. So I have five inch uh, five inches in between. Again, you can adjust that to your liking to the other one. I could measure distance from the edge, but I think it's more visually for me. I like to just measure how much in between and then from the center. But you could obviously measure, oh, it's four inches from the edge or whatever it might be. That's just what I figured with this. Guys can see. Okay, five inches there. Okay, so now we're gonna put the straps on. We're going to put them on the bag material and lining up the edges up here. Attack them in place. And you could go on and um, to the next step with them just pinned like this. I like to sew them, tack them in place before I actually sew the other lining on top of it. Especially just keeps it straight. Because most of the time you can't really see it. So just gonna quick forward and back. Take that out. Okay, so that's one. Pretty good on timing. So this is just getting pieces ready. Sometimes it takes forever just getting, we haven't quite made a bag yet. We're just getting pieces ready before you actually do the body of the bag. But it is pretty satisfying just having all those these pieces ready and then once you put the larger pieces together. Kind of doing chain stitch here. Just keeping it together to lengthen my, my thread. And I didn't even tack it. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. All right, but I am going to tack it now just so that it stays straight and perpendicular. Okay, great. So this next step, and when I, when I teach this sometimes, people's brains are like, why are we doing that first? It doesn't even look like a bag. Why are you? <laughs> doing it, it'll make sense, trust me. So we're taking this one that we just put the strap on, you can kind of see on the right, and then the top edge of the pocket. A lot of people mix this up too, top edge, because this is where the pocket is. Don't put this at the top, it's this top edge. So the top edge right here with the strap, okay? So we're gonna go so straight across from there. Now we're gonna do, go to the three eighths, this just provides more security, more fabric. We will do a top stitch at the end and it just gives more to grab onto. Three eighths, the bigger one. There it is. Three eighths. Okay, you can sew if you like or just go for it. If you teach sewing or you're going to teach, say, a friend or a family member how to sew, something I tell my students, um, this analogy I came up with is I first ask them, okay, when you are baking, do you start with the mixer in the batter or outside of the batter? So you start with it inside the batter. Why? So that the batter doesn't 
splatter everywhere. Because if you start out and you try to put it in, it gets, gets everywhere, right? So I say the same thing for the needle. The needle starts inside your fabric because then if you start out, the thread could get undone. It could just all become loose. So I start the needle inside the fabric and it just makes sure that you secure. <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once. It secures the needle. It secures the thread. I also make sure, you know, have like six inches of thread behind, but just ensures that you don't have to redo stuff. So that's an analogy that I use when I teach. And I can always hear when someone, or no, what is it? I can hear when someone doesn't have their foot down. So you also want to have the foot down and the needle down. And then you hear, oh no, because they didn't put their, they didn't put their needle in. Okay, so there is, oh, let me show. Uh, full hard. But yeah, that's a three eighths up there. I didn't change the thread for this. I could have changed the bobbin. I'm just keeping it that same one. Okay, there's the top, top, there's the pockets, top of the straps. Okay, this going over the straps is a little tricky, so I sometimes might have to hand crank it. There we go, just to get it on, because it is kind of thick. Hand crank it. I'm always looking at my ending edge to make sure it's still lining up. Right. Hey, I could have done chain stitch there. Forgot. <laughs> so, yeah, missed opportunity. Okay, this is done at the top. I can actually, I'm going to keep the pins in because it keeps it out of the way of everything else. But yeah, it's starting to look like a bag. Just that top part. In the instructions, I say open up the lining and the, the interior and exterior. So, I'm going to open that up, lay them flat. You kind of see them in my on the right side. Quick change adapter. That's it. Awesome. Yeah, this one has a screw. I wish it had a little lever, but I have to unscrew it every time. Okay, you're going to put right sides together and corresponding sides together. So blue to blue, brown to brown. Okay, you see that? All right, make sure the straps are nice and flat. They're going to be all the way from the seams. The first thing that you pin, I'm going to pick it up, are these, these joining seams. You want to make sure that those line up and make them alternate. So... Let's say the one here, I'm going to flap to the left, and the one closest to me, I'm going to flap to the right. This just makes sure that they are kissing right there, and that you're going to have a nice, clean seam. Sometimes I do two, two pins right there. So I don't know if you can see it. Look, top one is this way, and the bottom was the other way. See that? Okay, and then... This is the most important part, and then you line everything up from there. And I love bags because even if this was wonky, like this, see that's a little bit longer on one side somehow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to fit anybody. <laughs> it can just, it'll be hidden. So that's why I love making bags. You can cheat a little bit. So I actually did end up lining up. I just wasn't holding it totally flat. But that is a nice trick. It's all in the guts. They won't be able to see this at all. All right, so then we line up the other side, and you want it to match. So let's say the blue, I don't know if you can see, this blue is going down. So I'm going to make this side of the blue go down as well. This is going down. This will also go down. That means the other side will go the other way. Again, folding them opposite, having a kiss right in the middle. And I also want to keep them on the same side, meaning, okay, I have pins here. This is my top. So I'm going to keep the pins on the top so they're not underneath and I have to dig underneath while I'm sewing. And the fabric grows. when you're not looking. Yeah, the fabric, it just, I think you have all your measurements right. And just something just moves around. So, all right. So I have to move because my pins are on the inside of the pocket. I'm going to have to move those so I don't hit those while I'm sewing, holding those in place. 
And I know a lot of y'all are experts here. That's why you, you're buying all the fancy like parts and stuff. So I'm probably saying more than you need, but I still hope you're learning something and glad you're watching or those that are coming back for a replay. Hope it's still helpful. And again, I'm self-taught, so I just do what works and that's what still works for you. Each product's different, your machine, so, and whatever you're comfortable with, if you want a lot of pins or not. I'm using a lot of pins because I don't want to mess up what I'm teaching. And so this just makes sure I'm I'm just more accurate. <laughs> All right, last one. And yeah, it's a little wonky here, but you will not be able to tell. All right, so I'm gonna do one fourth. I am gonna change it again. And after this one, I will change it again. So two more changes. So one fourth. All right, so. Also in the instructions, I say leave a six inch gap. This is the gap that we will pull everything right side out. So you need to leave an opening here. Otherwise you just have fabric sewn all around. <laughs> um, you have an inside out pillow. So Sarah, Sarah. Go ahead. yes. Jane is asking, is there a right wrong way to attach the handles with the fold towards the inside or outside of the bag? Oh, this part, it doesn't matter at this point because you've already done the top stitch and attached the lining to the, the outside of the bag. Um, right now they're in the, they're more towards this outside part because I have already pinned there. But at this point they can float anywhere in between just as long as you don't sew it on the sides. Perfect. Does that Perfect. answer it? Is that helpful? It does. I think so, okay, great. All right, so I have my one fourth here. I'm leaving this gap in between and I'm gonna sew all the way around. And after this, we should be good timing. After this, we are just going to do a top stitch around. I am cheating a little bit here because my fabric was a little short. So we're just cheating a little bit. And now we'll catch up right back in the edges. If you wanted, you could also do a serger. If you, um, I, that's what I did on my other one because the crepe in the linen was just a little bit, um, it frayed quite a bit. Oh, all right, dang it. See, this is what I was afraid of, but we will make it work. So there's just some extra fabric in here. And you know what? If I pinch a little bit up here, it'll still look okay. Just the fabric is so slinky. And making sure that is still going opposite, pulling it here. And I'm just going to tuck a little bit. See how I just pulled that. And okay. Okay, pivot. The stitching on the strap should be placed the folded edge toward a particular side. Oh, that is a good question. So I think I did this intuitively. So the strap should you place the folded edge towards a particular side, out or in? I think I did mine out. If I'm understanding it right, because I I when I sold sewed the strap, and then obviously one side is thicker than the other because it has the seam allowance. I put on the outer edge. I don't know why. I think I just because. Yeah, I just put that on the outer edge of the bag. I don't know why. I think I, I put that on the outer edge, though. Probably just for more durability there. But is that true? Does it really need it? But, so I don't know if that was the question. And my stitching, I should have said my length. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> hey, no. Completely random question. Uh, sure. When you sew, do you prefer to have music on or do you like silence? Oh, I always have a TV show going on on my phone <laughs> for sure. Oh. Well, yeah, if it's an easy project and I know I have some time, um, yeah, I'll turn on usually true crime or a 90s sitcom. <laughs> um, those are my go-tos. <laughs> 
But if I'm honestly under a crunch, I don't have anything. And I kind of like to time myself because I feel like it helps me like move faster. I'm like, okay, I have five bags. How fast can I do these five bags? Is it faster than these other? You know, I like, I just make it a game for myself. So when you time yourself to do five bags on average, I know that it would depend on what type of bag you're sewing, but yeah. on average, what are you looking at? So of my, of my cosmetic bag where I have a zipper, I have lining. Oh gosh, that'll probably take me hopefully less than an hour to do five bags. And that's already like, it's already cut. This is just the sewing portion, but hopefully, yeah, an hour. Oh, efficiency. I, <laughs> I, I need to watch this stuff because I swear, <laughs> I go purses and it's an all day thing for me, but that's counting like cutting everything out. And I'm, yeah. I'm very, very particular when I cut out. So that's probably something I could work on, but dang, it's an all day thing. Cause my grandma always says, Oh, you should sell that to your niece or, and whatever. They want one of those purses. And I'm like, it takes a long time. It takes a long day. <laughs> It does depend on the bag. Uh, so yeah, I have to like mentally prepare myself. And I also like, okay, if this takes me an hour, okay, I'm going to be sitting at least for an hour. Let me just get through it, you know, whatever it is. But I do, I do cut, I cut everything. I pile them on, I stack them. I also, with my zippers, so I have a lining in the zipper. I also, I do, what's it called? Chain, the chain zippers. So it's just a continual spool and I cut them to size. I have a slider, so I like layer, I prep. This is how I prep. I do lining, zipper, uh, outside, and then outside, zipper, lining. So everything's even stacked and ready to go. So I don't even have to think. I just pull it and sew and pull it and sew. So that's that another way. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, yeah, just I do it in batches just so that it's not too much like, oh, let me reset my brain. And remember mm -hmm. what I do. I'm just going to, I'm in one track mind. I just do it all. And then I can move on to the next thing. So great tip. Okay. Love that. Oh, okay. <laughs> great. All right. I lied. We do have three more steps. So this is a box corner. If you haven't done one already, another little analogy, I'm going to do the brown one because it has less threads. So it's a lot cleaner. So you have, this is your corner. And I call this like a frog's throat doing like a ribbit, <laughs> like their fr their throat and their, their cheeks, not really throat, their cheeks like puff out. So this is the frog and his cheeks puff out <laughs> like this. It just came to me one day and some students still use it. So again, you have your corner, look at it flat and the cheeks puff out like this. This is how you make a little triangle I know some people pre-cut, like pre-measure and pre-cut their um, squares to make this box stitch, but I like to do it after because, I don't know, it's just less messy and, and I've just gotten used to this. So now I can just press them like this. The only tricky thing is like we did before, you have fabric going one way and the, the sorry, seam going one way and seam going the other way. And you can kind of like rub them and they butt up against each other. But if you prefer the other method of pre-cutting them, or you can even measure and cut right now. You could measure, there's my little ruler. I think it fell, but you could measure, it's whatever half of your base is gonna be. So if we are, for this one, we're gonna do one and a half um, stitch. You do half of that, which is three fourths. So then you would do three fourths, you do three fourths by three fourths. So then when you open it up, it has a one and a half base. So if your teacher said, you're going to be using math every day, I use it every day and I use geometry every day. Um, and if, yeah, if you didn't think that you would, here we are. So your math teachers, I'm sure are so proud of using math and geometry every single day. So I pinned it. I left enough space to mark a one and a half um, along the edge. Again, the, the seams are butted up against each other. I can usually eyeball it. I guess that helps with my timing as well. I can eyeball if it's an inch, if it's an inch box corner, but anything over an inch, I have to mark it. If it was for myself, I wouldn't care, but I'm giving this away to somebody, so it's gotta be good. I'm doing it on the outside and on the inside. And then when you do the inside, because you made a pocket, this has two layers. So don't put your hand, it's kind of small, so that's good. But I've seen some people, they make their corner 
in their pocket, if that makes sense. So make sure you separate pocket and lining, pocket and lining, then put your hand in to find that corner. You can also do it this way where you put your hand in and then you puff out the cheeks of the frog. And so yeah, y'all are having giving suggestions of what you guys would do to make the box corners. It's whatever works best. I actually, so when it is a tricky corner and it's not a perfect perpendicular shape, I have these like, this is like a what, obtuse triangle. And I mark like these lines for where, okay, this is where my stitch is. This is where I make the mark. And then where my sewing line will be. So sometimes I do make templates if it's more than just a perpendicular corner. But for these, I'm just doing it this way. And if I were making this on the daily, I would also make a template. And I think I've, I sewed that one. I haven't even sewn the other one. So I'm kind of just doing whatever I'm, my brain <laughs> feels like doing. Okay, because I know I have short, I'm short on time. We have five minutes left. But the next parts are pretty much just top stitches. And y'all might be able to finish those on your own. But I'll show you where those are. So now I'm just doing, I just do back stitch several times on those corners. Let me show you this one's a lot cleaner. And I just have that brown stitch. Uh, I still have the brown thread. Oops. And let's do a chain stitch here. Oh, that is another thing I do with my um, when I make these cosmetic bags, they have a one inch corner. I do, I do one after the other, after the other. So I do four at a time and then I sit and cut the chains like someone was mentioning. So, but this is not my normal one. So I did not get in the habit of that. Now we trim, I leave about one fourth seam allowance on the triangle. And you also don't have to do this corner. This is maybe if you want to fit more bulky items in the pockets, it gives a little more shape to it. Or you can leave them flat. A lot of tote bags are just flat. You can just do that. All right. Big reveal. So take your hand. Oh, taking it outside. Do you hear that little rip? I will fix that right now. I'm just going over it a couple times. All right, I don't know that we have time to finish, but let me show you what I would do. Now the blue is the lining. And what's great about just this tote bag and with a lot of tote bags you can make, it's reversible. So maybe you want the pockets on the outside. You just flip it out. You just want it blue to match your outfit or whatever. So there is our bag. So here are the box corners right there. So what you would do to finish it up is you would do, you just tuck that in, tuck the lining in. After you've checked all your seams, everything looks good. You didn't miss anything. You tuck in these seams and do a top stitch right there and then finish it off and do a top stitch around the edge and making sure that the strap obviously is facing out. Let me just take it to my machine so you can see what that looks like. And also a tip is to start on a side seam, not to start right in the middle because you will see your back stitches there. So just start on the side, someone somewhere a little more inconspicuous. And I would do a one eighth top stitch on that. So then when you get to your strap, you just make sure the strap is out of the way when you sew your top stitch there. And then you'll have a tote bag. So that is, that is everything. All right, one minute to spare. Thank you for joining. Thank you guys for having me. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> Great. Uh, you did awesome, you. Sarah. That was wonderful. And thank I know you. I picked up several tips, so I hope everybody else did too. So that's awesome.